A creative man is motivated by the desire to achieve, not by the desire to beat others. Those well-spoken words were spoken by Ayn Rand. Really? Do her followers know? Anyhow, I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome to another episode of Books and Beer, our weekly shambling through the mysterious domain of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and our topic today is writing groups and whether they still have any value in the great digital year of 2013. So before we get into Evo giving me crap about my writing group, uh, what you drinking over there? I am going to drink a Stone Ruin 10. IPA. That's uh, pretty fantastic, and that's not one you want to sit around and keep for a while, so I might mm -hmm. as well drink it. No, no. Uh, well, I have a Gubna Imperial IPA, which has sat around longer than Gubna's normally do in my refrigerator. It is doing just fine over here. Give the Gubna a harumph. Harumph, harumph, harumph. You need a mustache for that that I do right. not possess. All right, writing groups. Yes, writing groups. And now, my friend, you are in the hot seat. And so I've got a couple of questions to find out about this. For the folks at home, uh, Jeff has done the writing group thing. I have not and do not do the writing group thing. So we've never really had a conversation about why that is for either of us. So we thought, gee, wouldn't it be fun to persecute you? with all of this, too. That's so how that went. I remember it slightly differently, but all right, all right. With the, stick with the, stick with the, the, uh, the dramatic. Okay, we'll roll, yes. Roll, roll, roll. Okay, Jeff, so tell us a little bit about your group. Specifically, I want to know um, how long you have been involved, uh, how often you meet, little things like that. Hmm. How long I've been involved. That's actually kind of impressive. I think it's been something like seven years off and on. And it's a... It's a really diverse writing group. It's evolved over time. We have people constantly joining and you know, taking breaks and coming back. Um, I've done short form writing in it. I've done novel type writing in it, all fiction. Uh, I've worked on a screenplay. I've done sketch comedy. So we have a really versatile group that complements each other based on, you know, depending on whatever form you have. Uh, and we meet about every two weeks. Uh, sometimes it falls back to once a month, and sometimes it's more often, but usually about two weeks. And so this is a support group of sorts, not necessarily from like codependency, although maybe that's part of it as well. But just simply the idea behind a writing group is that you meet to, to, to get better. Is that the, the idea? Well, you meet to get better, and there's a certain amount of butt kicking and support group that's a part of it. Less so for me now, but when I first got into writing and you know, writing like you know, exercise or anything else, if you don't do it regularly, yep. it's hard to get into it. I mean, this is something I've been struggling with recently. If, if I don't sit down and put words to paper, you know, a lot of words to paper every day, then it's, it's a chore. If I have an incentive to keep going, it makes it flow more readily when I do sit down. Mm -hmm. So the writing group has been a little bit of that, that accountability. Right, you know, hey, I'm I'm going to have this by the next writing group. I'm going to commit to getting this done. Right. Or if I don't, hey, what the hell? I, you haven't written in a month. What's going on over there? So there's a certain amount of that as well as the, you know, exchanging material, reading each other's stuff, and saying, hey, this is this is shite. Can you you can do better than that? Well, well, to that end, I know a lot of sports people uh, buy the metaphor that you have to play against someone who's better than you, whether it's tennis, golf, chess, you know, drinking. No, probably not drinking. Um, but this, but if that's the I mean in your writing group uh, the ones that I met you all seem to be like it's a peer uh, group that's there it's not one person is above the rest you're not really writing against the, the the people who are better than you are are you? In general, no. I mean I, I'd have to agree with you on that again in general because everybody has different focus areas. Mm -hmm. You know there'll be somebody who really does characters well, does dialogue well, and they're gonna pull me apart if my dialogue is shoddy. We used to have two, and we have, there's still one at the moment, uh, high school English teachers. You know, you, you sometimes you'll get a, a work back and it'll be redlined and you'll feel like you just failed a class. 
So, you know, he's better at me in this particular area and is going to turn out, improve that aspect of my writing. Somebody in dialogue will improve a different aspect. So it's not that I'm going up against, you know, we've got Faulkner or Hemingway in the group, be but tough. everybody compliments everyone else. Okay, so it's complimentary style of writing. Got it. Got it. Now, I the reason I know these people in your group is um, I, I see them at least every other week when, when we get together, um, and I see them there. You guys all meet at a coffee shop local here in town. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. You know, this is uh, 2013. We do have this interesting thing, thing called the internet. So, do you find that physical proximity is really important, or you guys experimenting with new things like hangouts? other sorts of things because this is the internet world we live in. We, we do use the internets. Um, I think there's only one person in our group who thinks it's a fad and I, we may be on the verge of convincing her. Hi Rose, if you're out there. Um, <laughs> uh, we, you know, we do hangouts for some of our groups. Uh, specifically we're working on, here's, here's, here's a shocker, uh, a book. Um, collaboratively we're putting together a small book just to go through the process of putting together an effective writing group. So we're each working on a chapter and we meet via Hangouts to go through the edits and talk about the direction for it and, and, and so on. We also use Google Docs for all of our uh, posting of material. So if I have something I want the group to critique, I have to post it to Google Docs and then everyone can download it and share it and edit and put notes and, and so on in there. So we're using a lot of tools, but really, in the end, there is no final replacement for getting together in person, making a commitment to get up and drive and be somewhere and look them in the eye and say, hey, here's what I did and talk about it or say, yeah, I, I pushed out and I don't have anything this week. Of course, you're in the fifth largest metropolitan area in the country. Uh, there are, so obviously for you, it's a relatively simple thing to get in a car and drive to meet other people. For those who perhaps are do not have the uh, luxury of having a group of seven to ten people or three or four that they know they can get together. Do you think that it's still okay to do things virtually without having that face to face or they really need to go out of their way and find somebody local to get together with every couple of weeks? Well, I'm, I'm lucky that I've got this group of people to get together with. I think there are a lot of writing groups that get just flat out stuck. No one, and if you want to get together and write for fun, hey, knock yourself out. I'm the last person to critique someone's hobby. But if, the, but if a group isn't moving forward and it's just a social circle, then, you know, you can go out and find one online and find, you know, people that are using complementary genres or complementary styles and meet regularly to go over this work. The, you know, technology like Hangouts here opens that up so writing groups don't have to be in the same physical space. It's an interesting word you use there, the sense of accomplishment or getting to the finish line or whatever was you said, I've already forgotten because I've been drinking. How do you, how do you personally respond to the criticism that a, a writing group is lots of writing but not a lot of finishing? And do we need to have writing groups transform into more publishing groups since it's pretty that the writing thing is not the easiest thing in the world, but that's all done, and now the publishing is back in the people's hands. Should, should that become more of a focus? Well, I'll put a slightly different spin on it. Um, there's a lot of people who run, go out running, and yep. they're never going to enter a marathon. They're, they don't have a time they're against or anything else, and that's totally fine. Writing groups for the sake of writing, if that's what everyone has agreed they're there to do, is, is fantastic. You know, I write screenplays for the enjoyment of it. I'm never going to try to get an agent or pursue that. It's strictly, you know, my own thing. But a lot of writing groups get stuck, you know, oh, we're going to write a book, and oh, this is going to be the next novel, and there's no excuses for them anymore. You know, it used to be that that was a big road, uh, and, and now if they really do want to finish, they should get into a book where, or get into a group where that is something that group is, is after, or there's experience in the group or there's somebody who can help them achieve that. So a writing group for its own sake is fine, but a lot of people are stuck there and they should get the hell out and get to one where there's a little bit more motivation. Yeah, and I think we live in a place 
again, 2013, where there's more to it than simply writing a, a book and publishing a, a book. That's, that's not what everybody's goal is. You mentioned sure. runners. They don't have to enter marathons, right? Sure, there are 5Ks, there are fun runs, there are mud runs, there are the warrior dashes, all sorts of things that runners can do without actually entering a, a crazy marathon. Likewise, in publishing, you know, we've got... Wattpad, we've got other sorts of places you can start publish your short stories. I'm, I'm sure there's probably a collaborative screenplay writing place out there somewhere. There, there's lots of places to graduate from the, I've just done the typey typey thing, um, and it's, that's as good as I can get it with this group, but I need to kind of expand my wings and, and move on. It sounds like you're in support of that. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, in fact, just to give you an example with our particular group and to set you up for, for the next bout of heckling to ensue, um, Everyone in our group has something published in some form or another, whether it's an ebook on Amazon or in literary journals or, you know, in some other form or not, um, other than me. So, speaking so of you, yeah, like I said, I thought that might be a nice segue for you. <laughs> segue for that right there. Um, you have been outside of the, the novels and the screenplays and the other things that you have been doing inside of your group for the last seven years. Um, for the last six and a half years, you've been writing this book uh, on Facebook, I believe. About six and a half years, right? Is that something that? like that? Something like that, yeah. Something like that, right? Um, so let's let well, let's call it more like four months uh, that you've been in the process of developing, not just writing, but let's talk about the developing process of creating fabulous Facebook pages, no, yes, Fabu creating fabulous Facebook pages, yes, is that it? Yeah, I'd be hurt if not for the fact that I know you can't remember the tale of your own damn books. That's so true. I don't feel bad about this. So, <laughs> <laughs> Creating fabulous Facebook pages, a modern indie author's guide. It's uh, done. We've got a cover. You've got it edited. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. You just need to do that, getting past that little final stuff, which is actually gigantic and huge stuff. And you are going to have that book available for publication since you missed the, the deadline of today. When? Next Monday. Next month, did you say? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, next Monday. So oh. a week from today, I don't know what I don't have the calendar up right now. So for the next show, that will be up and on the air because the book is done. Is it check on the middle? The content's been done and edited. Thank you, Karen Conlon, and we've got a great cover. Thank you, Krista, and everything is ready to go. It's getting it to look the way I want from the tool that I chose to write it in, and all of those kinds of things. That is that kind of screwing about is not my favorite thing. Got it. So you could help uh, get, send send Jeff a little love. Uh, send it on Google Plus if you like to, or go to his Facebook. You have a Facebook profile, right? You still do the the Facebook thing, right? It's still there. You can go yeah. friend it over there. Yeah, it's it's. You might be able to find it. It's it's the one that's you know bigger than Google. Plus. <laughs> yeah. I knew we were gonna get into that before long. Well, uh, so yeah, book will be coming out, and, and it's a great resource. Much again, it's geared into authors. So if you uh, have struggled with figuring out what Facebook means to you and how do you separate your friends and family, which you have too many of, on Facebook from your author life, uh, Jeff's book will help you out with that. So congrats, and I'm looking forward to reading it again because it's been like four months since I've read it, so I can't wait to see yeah, what Yeah, I was going through some of it editing, and I'm like, huh, who wrote this? I said that? <laughs> hmm. And on or around that exact same time, it's highly possible that a serialized audiobook version of writing awesome book blurbs, also a modern indie author's guide by moi, might actually be available. Recording's done, editing's done, I just need to post I'm, it. I'm sorry, Evo, did you say book blurbs? Is this a new book? Because you wrote one about sales copy. Now that's, that's the same thing. Right book blurbs, sales copy, you people keep calling blurbs well, you keep calling sales copy blurbs, and I finally have thrown in the towel. You you win. I've renamed the book to make it easier on you. So you'll have three different books out in the Modern Indie Author's Guide uh, sometime uh, this month, in, in about a week is what it sounds like. So awesome stuff. Cool. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Thank you very much for the information. Hopefully those of you out there got something out of the writing 
group conversation, and if you've got one, we'd love to hear your stories about it, so you can leave comments on our website uh, about that. You can find out some of the things we talked about here. The show notes will be pretty sparse because it was more informational, not a whole bunch of boom, 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 but they'll be there. That's over at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We help authors... What do we do again? No, we create workshops and guidebooks and roadmaps, right, that's it, to help indie authors cut through the complexity of the publishing world. Check all that out, epublishunum.com. For my partner, Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for enjoying the show. <laughs>